Believe it or not, people have been asking me for an updated list of the best Alliance Conquest teams. And believe it or not, I know this is going to sound crazy, I have been playing Alliance Conquest a little bit lately. Now, I'm partially making this video, of course, like I said, for the people who are asking for updated teams. I'm also partially making this video to hold the devs accountable and put their feet to the fire so that they actually go through with and maybe enhance and do more uh, for the promised Alliance Conquest buffs. Because if you go back, I'm not going to pull it up here, but if you go back to the dev note that they dropped just before, I believe it was just before the anniversary, which we all expected them to do, as they are wont to do, they mentioned upgrading PvP, and they've already made some changes to other world battle. They've already made some changes to timeline battle, and so we're missing the big conquest. Now, in my heart of hearts, I always, I still believe, I still have hope, I still have optimism that conquest can be a really good game mode. I think just this is my standard PSA with all my conquest videos. I think it needs to be one versus one. Uh, my alliance just got out of a gangbang where we were facing Axis and Axis of God. So big surprise, but we lost. Huge, huge shocker. Right, it's basically like taking, you know, uh, taking the Los Angeles Lakers and duplicating them into two teams, and then allowing uh, the you know both teams to play at the same time, ten versus five, uh, on the court. Or it's like you know you have um, Mike Tyson versus some boxer versus whatever George Foreman, uh, but now you're allowed to bring in another Mike Tyson to fight at the same time. Obviously, the second Mike Tyson is not going to punch the first Mike Tyson; he's going to punch uh, George Foreman, and so it's a, it's a gangbang. It's a two v one scenario. So yeah, any any meaningful changes to Conquest need to address the 1v1v1 BS and change it to just being 1v1, and then they need to buff the rewards and then do other things. So that's that's always you know been my side, kind of day one for Conquest. I said it six years ago or seven years ago. I'll say it again now. Uh, that's what they need to do to buff this game mode to change it to make it better. That being said, for those of you that play Conquest, let me share with you some secret insider strats. These are courtesy of not of myself. But I'll explain the teams because I understand them more or less. Courtesy of the guys over at Nemesis. My boys in Nemesis, Great Tier, K Crow, all those boys helping me out to construct some badass teams. So what you see here is either 10 super heavy hitting big time teams, but that would drain the majority of your roster of, of strong characters. Or you can see 20 teams where you just have to choose either you know the, the first half or the second half and then just fill quickly fill with some garbage right so what you would do is you would choose let's say that first team where it's hulk molecule man and adam warlock and then you have strife magic and polaris you would you would choose that team and then when it queues in you would just quickly take out polaris uh strife and magic you would just pop them out switch from descending to ascending and then just pop in any three characters any three just kind of garbage tier your lowest build characters and the reason why you want to do that is to maximize the number of attacks that you can do in a given cycle of conquest because otherwise you're looking at this and you're like man i can only attack 10 times per day in conquest but of course you want to hit that reward right you want to hit that, that conquest reward for 30 attacks right and so in order to do that you want to spread out your valuable teams and you want to be able to do the most damage in the most number of places and truth be told if you build your roster wide if you if you do play conquest if you are competitive then chances are you're going to have a lot of overlap in terms of the the damage you're going to deal and so for example with that second team madeline can probably take out most characters most other teams right there's maybe a couple of teams that she can't take out maybe like a sentry team she can't take out but barring a couple of huge heavy hitters she can probably take out uh most of the teams especially if i hunt for type advantage situations where i'm where i'm attacking combat types but then you look at that second team ghost rider and gene they obliterate anyone because mbaku is providing them with all those buffs and this sort of explains that team setup here. Gene is just going to blow up the whole thing, but then also Ghost Rider checks villains. So that second team is actually super duper powerful. You don't want to waste that attack by just having them as the second string to Madeline and a couple of buffs, right? So again, you would queue up this team here, and then you would you would cycle them out. Or alternatively, the, the nice thing is the flexibility. Let's say you choose team two and you hit go, you can cycle this team out, right? And then and then just and then swap to ascending and cycle some bums in and go. And then your first team gets blown up that's fine your second team comes in and nukes i believe for the sake of like maximum efficiency you don't want to cycle out the set you don't want to leave the second team in and cycle out the first team um because i believe that will allow i might be wrong about this though i think it like allows the uh the team that blows up your like the enemy team that blows up your first team which would be like shitters it allows them to like ramp faster 
right? Because I think they charge up their tier threes and stuff like that. I don't know if it resets. It might reset. Anyways, that's basically, or it might be something with reviving, that there's an issue where it's your second team rather than your first team. But anywho, um, that being said, let's go through the teams now. So at the top there, we sort of see a Strife team with Polaris and Magic. This is pretty straightforward. The team doesn't really function unless you have artifacts for Strife and Magic. Um, if you only have one for Magic, it can still work because she has Immortality. But if you're lacking both artifacts, then I would say probably best to design a different team. Maybe move Sinister up into one of these positions uh, or somebody else. Um, because Polaris is really just providing support. And then the main damage is coming from Magic and a little bit from Strife. So just be careful with that team because it's a little bit top heavy. Um, and it's not as strong as some of the other teams and not as like intuitive. Hulk is there with Adam and Molecule Man. You can sub out Hulk for a support if you want to just let Adam try to carry, try to one shot. It really depends on what you're looking for. You could bring in someone like Corvus for revive tech, you know, stuff like that if you just want more burst damage. And then Molecule Man is there as the lead to allow you to nullify teams that are heavy on supports. So you can use this team to attack a team that has Colossus, that has these other crazy buffs, that has, you know, like Eternals buffs, whatever, um, in order to neutralize those buffs. And then you either, you know, you either pair Adam with a support or you pair Adam with a villain that either has high burst damage like Hulk, even like the, the Fear itself Hulk, or has um, Revive or something like that. Corvus obviously deals much less damage than Hulk, but he does have the Revive. This team is sort of speaks for itself. Uh, Jean, the Jean Grey Ghost Rider team is one of the strongest in the game very very strong again some people prefer to pair gene with somebody else like wolverine but i think he's good enough on his own that he can carry so this way it allows you to do some good stuff you can also pair ghost rider in a different team if you want um depending on how strong your ghost rider is mine is still built with a rage but if you have yours built with a greed then you can absolutely move him onto a different team and then pair somebody else somebody weaker with gene it's a little bit too much power in that team but like for my case it, it kind of just works um, here you have Thanos with the Mantis support, which a lot of people forget about, and then Hela. Very, very strong team. This team will be ex especially good against hero teams. Just be careful with Wolverine because he shreds Thanos' bussy. Okay, so just be careful with that if your Thanos is not up to the task. Hela will survive because of her mortality, but then it just comes down to whether your mortality runs out first or his does. And it depends on you know how, how well your, your Hela is built. So just be careful with that one. It's a little bit tricky, but most of the other hero teams get kind of dominated by that uh, that Hela Thanos combo, especially if you can pick off like a lone sentry or something like that. Uh, that that Gore team with uh, Juggernaut and Chavez, this is a much weaker team compared to all the other ones we've talked about thus far. The power level is much, much lower, but it's still pretty good. You have Reflect Reduction, so you don't have to worry too much about that. You have iframe Ignore, and Chavez can su do surprisingly good damage with her third skill counter. So don't, uh, don't be afraid to try to punch up with a team like that. But again, it depends on your builds, depends on the artifacts you have for those characters and, and that sort of stuff. Standard Symbiote team just does absolute work. You can also swap if you want. You can swap um, Surfer's lead for Carnage's, depending on what you need. Surfer's is giving you 30% attack and defense. I think that's just straight up better than, uh, than Carnage, but I can't move them over to check. I can't remember what Carnage's leadership is. Uh, let's see if we can find out here. This is just defense. So, no, you wouldn't want to swap Carnage uh, into the lead position. I guess in some rare instances, if you think that Carnage is better off, that Surfer is better off on the left or on the right versus in the middle, if positioning is a really a big thing for you, but that's for more, like, heavy, heavy AC-focused players. That's not really my uh, wheelhouse, so I won't comment. But in terms of just, like, raw numbers, yeah, Silver Surfer's lead is better because it gives you the defense plus the attack and the speed. They're having uh, anti-venoms... Uh, or sorry, Agent Venom's artifact is huge, absolutely massive. The team definitely takes a hit without it. And then, of course, Carnage's artifact is needed in order for him to do anything. Um, and otherwise, you might want to just sub in someone weaker, like Toxin or whatever, just to be a body that's a symbiote um, if you're still working on your Carnage. Uh, then you have that other team there. Again, quite a bit lower on the power scaling, but you have Wenwu's lead. And then you have uh, Mr. Sinister. Remember, he has the Immortality artifact. So if you see that, you have to be aware and sort of plan for it. You have a standard um, Spider-Verse team with Miss uh, Spider-Woman and her buffs, and then Chasm and his buffs. Chasm's aka Scarlet Spider. His artifact is also a buff, so try to get your hands on that one if you're trying to make that team stronger, if it's, you think it's struggling. Um, and then here you have Kang with Rachel and Domino. So this is an interesting team. Kang and Rachel both have Revive, 
so you can use them if you're having trouble you can sub one out of the team so you can you can quickly queue this team up and then take out kang or take out rachel and sub them in with a weak character and just use them to drain uh, a life a revive from a character or try to stall out an immortality or something like that you can use them so, as sort of like fodder or as a sacrificial attack team you also have domino who is surprisingly good she has guard break immunity so my advice to you is build her for uh build her sort of like adam warlock build her with like a mighty energy or something like that you just want to do a bunch of burst damage with that uh, i think it's second or third skill counter yeah you just want to do a bunch of burst damage she has access to penetration so you don't need uh destruction um, and she can do some really she can actually be really surprisingly strong here you have your standard sentry team sentries being paired up with wolverine in my case but you can also separate them this is just like a a, a tier team very difficult to beat because you have both Sentry and Wolverine. You take Wolverine out, Sentry's vulnerable to like a Hella Thanos combo. You just have Wolverine, he can maybe be stalled out by Kang or something like that if there's enough burst damage to stall through his immortality. But this way, you sort of have the best of both worlds. But again, it's up to you. It's up to how much you want to stack your teams versus how wide you want to go, how many potential uh, attacks and wins you want to get. Uh, and then Ebony is there as a support. Um, if you have a full black um order team you could sub ebony into a team like that with black swan and somebody else but again you're going to need to have a very good build on all of those you're probably going to need or want tier 4 ebony tier 3 is not probably going to be quite enough uh, but just keep that in mind in case you do have his artifact the gladiator captain marvel team can be surprisingly good you have a lot of burst damage because gladiator's leadership is buffing captain marvel because you can rely on wasps passive there so you do have a lot of burst damage um potential but you will do have to build them for that in that situation you have to give uh you know captain marvel a destruction and then probably a regen or or a, a maybe a refinement for a gladiator so he can survive a bit longer uh, because he doesn't have iframe ignore this team is pretty weak for me because i only have black widow built for pvp so th but this would be a nice um team to try to take down try to burst down villains if you have like a villain squad that's not quite as strong you can burst them down with this team because sure it provides all those crazy buffs and then you have like a standard speed lineup you could sub out um black swan with another speed type character like i could move black widow over if i'm building black swan for the uh black order team with ebony right i could make another team with black swan and ebony and then move uh black widow over who would i replace black widow with instead for that team there with captain america i would probably just shuffle that captain america team out altogether and put shuri somewhere else as a support but yeah just keep that in mind quicksilver is nice with uh echo as a nice one two punch because she gives him a lot of defense which he desperately needs so yeah pairing echo and quicksilver together is kind of a no-brainer uh, and then rounding out the list here we have your standard warriors of the sky team with white fox support this is pretty straight up i wouldn't substitute white fox for shadow shell unless she's tier four because you want that extra burst damage on blue dragon's awakening you have your standard defenders lineup no no real uh need to explain that one you have uh basically what is like kind of a reflect slash anti-reflect tech team doom has reflect reduction that we talked about recently so he's good against reflect teams and then you have adam you sorry you have uh, emma and shang chi both providing iframe ignore and reflect so it's a it's an interesting team it's kind of an oddball team it's not going to work for everybody but if it does work it can be very effective it can also be a bit of a curveball to throw at enemy teams where they have to sit and think and it takes them more time to come up with a counter team because they're thinking like how strong is this team what's the power level and then that time that they waste actually works in your alliance's advantage you also have a standard um what is it called annihilators team with quasar and icon blue marvel doesn't do anything for this team but he does provide buffs for attack i believe it's att attacking debuffed characters or something like that or, or so it's like that taunt or whatever it's called with uh, characters that have the debuff cleanse active so it does provide a little bit more burst damage there you have instead of uh an eternals team which i think is a bit weak these days you have cersei with uh, anti-man and then the cleanse from um, angel again it's a bit clunky team it can be uh, a little bit tricky depending on your builds but i would say these last two spots are more like flex spots depending on how your roster is built rather than you know uh, sticking to exactly what i have here you know obviously any of these teams you can tweak the way you want them but the ones here at the end are much more uh, open to tweaking and then you have um basically a saber tooth team set up for to try to get saber tooth to do as much damage as possible absolutely needs his artifact very similar to the team at the top with strife and magic you're relying on a mutant who has immortality if you don't have his immortality artifact then you're kind of out of luck there you have to have it 
and then you're trying to get him to do as much burst damage as possible so honestly my build is probably not great you probably want to greed um because you're just bursting through with that immortality with uh kitty's leadership and then uh exodus providing the debuff cleanse and the max hp so yeah that's how it shakes out there's probably some extra teams that i missed along the way but this does hit most of the best pvp characters uh you know that you're going to want to use it doesn't include very recent pvp characters like the fantastic four so like i was saying you would probably sub out uh this team here and and insert the, the fantastic four and have a better lineup but again that also depends on how well you've built you the fantastic four if you invested them if you have franklin etc otherwise uh roll with what you've got and good luck to you so yeah let me have in the comments down below let me know if this uh updated top 20 teams for conquest helped you thank you so much for watching smash the like button if you enjoy the content and i'll see you in the next one take care